Okay, I'm staying with the uh, phone mic rather than the lav mic because you can hear the room acoustically. And um, I have discovered the problem with that buzz. And I went through the whole thing thinking, I did a lot of work on this five years ago. It just shouldn't be buzzing like this. And then it occurred to me, the hum control is externally accessible without a screwdriver, which means that it's also the, hey, what's this thing do control? No more buzz. I'll fine tune that for the absolute quietest position. This kind of thing I don't like to have externally available because it turns everything, you know, this or a bias knob, like on that uh, uh, SL lamps, it turns into the, hey, what's this do? And then things go to hell. In this case, it just buzzed and hummed. But uh, when you're changing the bias on a 150 watt amp randomly, uh, worse things can happen. So that takes care of that. Now I've got uh, these Sylvanias numbered one, two, three, to find out where the quietest positions are. There's a little bit of a ring that you'll hear at tubes and stuff on the bench that are vibrating. But, uh, <coughs> pardon me, this was also a very good opportunity to try out this other Sylvania 6L, uh, 6LS7, uh, what is it called? 6SL7, yeah. Uh, that's in that 49 Epiphone, where I was concerned that that amp just did not have enough gain. So we're going to put this in V1 first. I'm going to channel 2, which is the channel that had that distortion before. And I've got some thoughts on that, but we're going to rule out tubes first. Let's let this one warm up and uh, see how this one from 40, the 49 amp does. slightly microphonic. All right, let's go back to the original number one in comparison. Less gain, less microphonics. Also had that rushing water noise when it first came on. All right, so now we're gonna. Ow, that's hot. Jesus. Put it in standby real fast. We're gonna swap tubes one and two. See how tube two does in the input spot. Actually, I'm going to put tube one to the side. I'm going to use this unnumbered uh, Sylvania from that 49 Epiphone in two. Because this has more gain than number one. That tube is very microphonic, but it definitely has more gain than tube one. So these are all things that I suspected from earlier, and now I can con confirm that. So I'm going to swap three and two and see how three does. A lot of times when you have a problem with a, a tube, the earlier in the uh, amplifier's uh, circuit it occurs, the more audible that will be. So we know that this one's got gain, but is microphonic. This one's slightly microphonic, has low gain. This one seems to be quite good from the 49, but uh, let's see how number three is doing. All right, notice that number two that was microphonic is not microphonic in the phase inverter position, just in V1. V1 is the one where it's going to be most prone to that. So this tube complement has higher gain 
and lower microphonics than we had before. So let me put this back in standby. We're going to take this one out and put the old number one there in the number two spot and see how it does as far as gain and noise in that cathode follower position. Is that rushing water noise with this tube that I don't get with the other tube. So this tube needs to go away. And it's anemic. Before, I suspected I had an uneven triode, uneven gain between its triodes because channel two, when, this was, when that tube was in position one, was so much lower in output than channel one, and it had a lot of uh, intermittent noises. And then put in V2, where that uh, second triode is used as a cathode follower, the amp loss gain compared to... So, um, I definitely need to order one new 6SL7 for V1. I know that this tube from the Epiphone is fine. I don't need to change it out in the Epiphone. Uh, that 5879 may be low gain. There's some other weird things in that Epiphone I'll talk about in a video on that that could be causing uh, the low gain uh, compared to the tube's potential gain. Um, but now I have, on this SVT, not SVT, with it's B15, uh, I may change two, just because I know that tube is prone to be microphonic and that problem could develop. Right now it's not problematic in this spot, but it could become a problem and it would be in the middle of tracking a session, you know. So two 6L7s, uh, uh, 6SL7s for this amp. So that takes care of um, the, that hiss and buzz, and that helps me sort out uh, the preamp tube issues, which leaves me with two things. If you'll recall from the previous video, I was concerned because these wires had some charring on them. And what those wires are doing in this 1960 is the center tap connection from the HT secondary on the power transformer. Pardon me. Let me power this off while I do this. Wrong way. Uh, the center tap from the uh, HT secondary goes to ground through uh, the cable run all the way to the speaker cabinet and then connects to ground here. And that's just potentially a bit too much current to be sending that far outside the amp and I think that might be why that charred. On later ones, I think uh, in 65, yeah, starting in 65, they changed the way that was wired. So instead of running the HT center tap to ground uh, through all that, so the amp would only have power if the external uh, connection was made, they change it so that the uh, 1K cathode of the phase inverter, which I believe is this one, I have to, have to find it. Uh, it just lifts whether that uh, 1K is connected to ground. And uh, the other thing it does is it lifts the uh, um, output transformer common from ground. And I need to think about that and see if I'm happy with that as a solution versus uh, some other way to turn the amp off if the external cabinet is not connected. I just need to think about it. There's the way they did it in 1960. Definitely has problems. That's why they changed it. There's the way they did it in 1965. Doesn't seem to be that much better to me. I um, just want to think about yeah, it's, it's this 1K. But uh, in this app from 60, they've got that bypass cap there in the 
65. Okay, they leave the bypass cap and disconnect the uh, resistor. That also seems a little bit problematic. I'm going to think on that. I'd just like to have a, a way of, of doing it well so that that cannot char from a current situation. Uh, too much current through the wires over the years. It's not going to happen today. It's not going to happen next week. But, you know, it happened sometime in the last 62 years, and I'd like to stop it from happening again. So that's the, the, uh, the next thing I want to address, and one other big bugaboo. The hardware that mounts all this seems to be pretty damaged. I'm going to take a look at it and see what our options are. All right, you see all these bendy bits? That's why it's messed up. All these screws got uh, totally bent. Um, this is a rubber grommet. It's supposed to be sitting flat against the chassis. The bases are actually bent. I could fix that. Um, and then it's supposed to have this. I think another rubber grommet was supposed to go on top, though those are long gone. And then this screw is supposed to go straight up, but it wasn't. And so all of them were in here at angles. Um, and uh, it really wasn't isolating the uh, chassis from the vibrations of the cabinet much. Um, I may be able to do some stuff to fix this, as in just getting this as tight as possible, very carefully cutting the old screw out with the Dremel, which point it should unscrew, and then I can replace these screws. Look like eight by 32, maybe they're 10, 24s or something. Uh, replace these screws and uh, fit a new rubber grommet or bushing at this point where it mates up on the bottom at these points with washers. I will find out what my options are without spending uh, too much time or money, hopefully. I'd really rather not have to get in here with each with the Dremel and rebuild each one from scratch. Plus, this, these existing rubber grommets are 62 years old. Um, rubber degrades, neoprene degrades. I'm going to see if there's uh, some other option. Flip tops and or McMaster car await. So between this and whatever improvement I do to the switching that gets that high current potential out of the uh, cabinet wiring, uh, I think those and uh, two new tubes will make this thing uh, really sound fantastic for another 62 years. Well, I decided to do the uh, 65 wiring change to take the stress off the current through these two wires going to ground. I th it seems to be working just fine. Um, I also found the needed suspension mounts at fliptops.net. So those and some new 6SL7s are on order. And if there's any confusion earlier in the video, because I kept mispronouncing that, I honestly have a hard time remembering sequences of letters and numbers. Um, I can remember any word, uh, but just random strings of letters and numbers or, you know, telephone numbers or anything uh, that has numbers just flies out of my head. It's just one of those things. I can't remember them. Can't keep them straight. So you want to hear a Shakespeare uh, solilo soliloquy I memorized when I was 18? I'll do it tomorrow, tomorrow, and tomorrow. But uh, I can't remember 6SL7 uh, for five minutes straight. <laughs>